सो दिस इज अंजू शर्मा वेलकम टू माई चैनल सो टूडेज टॉपिक इज रेस्टिंग मेमरी पोटेंशियल इन प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव सीन दैट हाउ एनी आयन एनी न्यूट्रिएंट मूव फ्रॉम हाई कंसेंट्रेशन टू लो कंसेंट्रेशन दैट इज पैसिव ट्रांसपोर्ट राइट एंड इफ इफ इट हैज टू मूव फ्रॉम लो कंसेंट्रेशन टू हाई कंसेंट्रेशन दैट इज एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्ट सो टूडे वील सी वॉट रेस्टिंग मेमरी पोटेंशियल इज राइट ओके सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल हाउ रेस्टिंग मेमरी पोटेंशियल इज डिस्कवर्ड सो वेन साइंटिस्ट दे वर मेजरिंग पोटेंशियल फ्रॉम इलेक्ट्रोड ऑफ आउटसाइड द सेल एक्स्ट्रा सेलर सर्फेस इट वॉज जीरो जीरो पोटेंशियल राइट बट वेन वन इलेक्ट्रोड इज प्लेस्ड आउटसाइड एंड वन इलेक्ट्रोड इज इंसर्टेड इन टू द सेल इट हैज बीन फाउंड दैट द पोटेंशियल इट deflected to our negative side or if we see the same thing in graph this is membrane potential so previously in extracellular surface it was zero when electrode is inserted inside cell it abruptly reduce to minus around 70 millivolts right so at rest phase the condition of cell is inside negativity and outside positive that is called resting membrane potential If we see a nerve at resting phase, if we zoom the membrane, this is selective permeable membrane, and if we see extracellular, there is positive charge, and intracellular there is negativity, right? But different cells have different resting membrane potential. Skeletal cardiac muscles uh, have minus sixty to minus ninety millivolt, and smooth muscles have minus fifty five millivolt. even cardiac pacemaker tissue also have the same rmp right so before going to know like before reading that how rmp is generated we should know the concentration intracellularly and extracellularly so intracellular concentration if we see there are high concentration of potassium as you can see 155 in intracellular fluid and 5 millivolt in extracellular fluid there are high protein and phosphate group so cations are potassium and magnesium which are present intracellularly and anions are proteins and phosphate right if we talk about extracellular there is sodium concentration high calcium concentration is and so sodium calcium and if we see anions they are chloride and bicarbonate right so inside is high potassium concentration even that at rest inside is negativity right so the question is how resting membrane potential is generated then okay so we know that if this dotted this dashed line is just consider it a rest uh, a membrane cell membrane and inside there is high concentration of some ion let's say x okay there is less concentration outside okay so one is outside and two is inside so if there is high concentration of ion added provided the membrane is permeable to this ion it can move toward outside right if it move toward outside first of all it can create negativity okay if positive charge if x ion is let us say x ion is cation so the cation if it move toward outside it create negativity fine so we know that if inside the x number of cations there will be x number of anions also so that a neutrality can be maintained same outside for example here 10 cations are present and 10 anion will be present right here also if eight cations are present eight anions will be present fine so if there is 10 cation right out of which if three cations move toward outside the neutrality is imbalanced now fine so the the concentration from 10 to 8 the gradient is formed this so because of this high concentration the ions have tendency to move toward other side that is called concentration gradient or chemical gradient fine but 
if this neutrality is maintained if this neutrality is imbalanced here 10 anions but 8 cations are present or if 3 have moved 7 cations are present then there is tendency there is a force which want to move the 3 cations back to its previous site so there is a tendency to reverse this chemical gradient that is called electrical gradient right so in brief there is high concentration of cations high concentration of so this high concentration of cations from high to low there is a concentration gradient and there is a electrical gradient which want to reverse it so that electrical neutrality can be maintained so at resting phase equilibrium potential is necessary equilibrium potential means there is no net influx or efflux of any charge so let us take x ion we are talking about so electrical equilibrium potential of uh, say x ion so equilibrium potential is when chemical gradient becomes equal to electrical gradient fine so equilibrium potential of x ion is when chemical gradient of x ion becomes equal to electrical gradient of x ion so whatever charge will move the same force will be applied to to oppose to oppose the diffusion of that charge right so this thing is meant explained by Nernst equation Nernst equation gives that equilibrium potential of x ion is r2 rt by zf r is gas constant t is temperature z is valency f is faraday constant natural log of outside x concentration divided by inside x concentration Nernst equation is giving the equilibrium potential of one ion provided that ion the membrane is permeable to that ion right here assuming the concentration of rt by f and putting uh, the values of this the the equation becomes 60 by z log of outside concentration by inside concentration of x z if if we if we calculate this equation of potassium z is 1 for potassium right valence is 1 so equilibrium potential of potassium is 60 by 1 log of outside concentration of potassium is 5 millimole inside is 155 millimole so the value come around minus 89 millivolt we know that resting membrane potential is minus 90 millivolt or minus 70 to minus 90 millivolt right but equilibrium potential of potassium is also resembling the same now we can say that this ion is responsible for resting membrane potential but we should know whether it's permeable at rest or not. So, but Nernst equation is giving that of one ion only. But our membrane, our cell membrane is not like that. That it's permeable to only one ion. Obviously, there are number of ions which are crossing through membrane, right? So, Goldman-Hodgkin-Karge equation taken into consideration of all the ions permeable that time it's it calculate the membrane potential at rest right or you can say it can calculate membrane potential at any situation of cell membrane okay considering all the permeable ions and their concentration inside and outside right so goldman hodgkin card's equation this is also same equation but it's taken into consideration p permeability and concentration so permeability and concentration outside and inside of potassium sodium and chloride because these three are considered to be major contributor major which can cross the membrane easily right now if you see at rest they have compared the permeability if you see permeability of potassium sodium and chloride the permeability of potassium is very high as compared to sodium and chloride and we also calculated that equilibrium potential of potassium is equivalent to RMP which can explain easily that 
potassium is permeable at rest and which is having a equilibrium potential equivalent to resting membrane potential which is explaining that potassium is the major contributor which is responsible for negativity of this inside negativity of membrane so are you clear because when potassium leaves the cell membrane it leaves negativity inside and more positive outside that is the situation of rmp right and during action potential also action potential actually that will be next video of mine and just uh, by now you just have a idea that the negative rmp when it become positive that is action potential right and at that situation when permeability is measured it has been found that sodium is 20 time more permeable during action potential and when membrane potential equilibrium potential of sodium is calculated it become it comes around plus 55 which is explaining that sodium can be a good contributor of action potential which will be explained further videos okay so if we can summarize resting membrane potential is one thing is it is due to the charge separation the intracellular and extracellular concentration difference right second thing is selective permeability of any ion to plasma membrane and we know that it's potassium which is contributing so high high permeability of potassium and the equivalent uh, equilibrium potential of potassium so the potassium is major contributor of resting membrane potential now if we know that potassium is being thrown outside and leaving the negativity inside so the, the the gradient is disturbed right the gradient is disturbed now it's not 155 inside and it's not 5 outside the concentration is disturbed so there must be some mean which can reverse this concentration so that next time again rmp can be achieved so ionic gradient is necessary which can be established by ionic pump now what that mean so just just have a look just, just just to show you a base that what rmp is so this is rmp resting membrane potential minus 90 millivolt right this is a cardiac ventricle in which minus 90 is resting membrane potential so here the cell is in resting phase but because of some reason potassium influx occur potassium when comes inside there will be positivity inside the membrane and that's why the membrane potential is going toward positive state right and then again because so this is called depolarization uh, you need not to focus on this because next video is on action potential so this is action potential the whole cup but here again it has to achieve the same resting membrane state so that next resting next action potential can be generated this is role of sodium potassium ATPase pump what's that so sodium potassium ATPase pump which we know that potassium is thrown outside so potassium is to be brought back right so this is work of sodium potassium pump what it does is sodium bind to this sodium binding site of sodium potassium pump right ATP bind to that but when phosphate group attaches to it then conformational change occur so that it become closed end and the closed end become open so extracellularly and open and the sodium is thrown outside the same time potassium bind to potassium binding site to potassium right and this phosphate group detach so as this phosphate group detach the conformation change occur and it again regain the same previous uh, position so potassium is again thrown inside so you know potassium were thrown outside right and now potassium is thrown inside so that this gradient is again maintained okay so sodium potassium pump so we know that resting membrane potential is due to one thing is different concentration inside and outside second is selective permeability across the membrane and obviously potassium permeability and third is the ionic gradient maintained by sodium potassium curve pump which is major contributor right i hope testing membrane potential is clear to you people so please subscribe my channel if you like my videos and press bell icon to get notifications so
Thank you so much. If you have any query, please, 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 please comment below. Okay. Thank you so much. Happy learning.